Welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the narcotic drug cannabis. So topics that we're going to uh, discuss are firstly, what actually is cannabis and what is the active ingredient within cannabis. Then what we'll discuss is what are the usual routes of administration for cannabis. Then we'll discuss what effects does cannabis actually have on the brain. So what is it actually like to take cannabis? And finally, we'll discuss what is understood about the mechanisms by which cannabis actually achieves these effects on the brain. Okay, and it's fair to say that we only have the tip of an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg of an understanding of how uh, cannabis actually achieves the effects that it does on the brain. Okay, so firstly, what is cannabis then? Well, cannabis is the name given to a plant okay and the cannabis plant and this cannabis plant has in its leaves and in its stalk an active ingredient which is the ingredient that actually has the effects on the brain so the first thing that we're going to study then is what is the active ingredient within uh, the leaves and the stalk of the cannabis plant uh, which actually has the um, effects on the brain okay so there are different names for this, and the different names depend on how correct you want to be, okay? So most people call the active ingredient that is within the cannabis plant's leaves uh, just THC, okay? And THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol, okay? However, there are more uh, in-depth names for this because, in fact, there are actually loads of different forms of tetrahydrocannabinol, and the one that is in the cannabis leaves that is the actually uh, active ingredient that has the effects on the brain is a specific form of tetrahydrocannabinol. Okay, now, there are two levels up from just calling it tetrahydrocannabinol. Okay, there's an intermediate level, and then there's the absolutely correct level. Okay, so the intermediate level is to then call it delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, like so. So delta, the Greek symbol delta, and then superscript 9, and then THC, like so. So this is the sort of intermediate step up. This is more rigorous than this name, but it's still not as rigorous as we can go. The most rigorous name for the active ingredient that is within the cannabis plant is negative trans delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, like so. So negative trans delta 9 and then tetrahydrocannabinol. This is the most rigorously correct name for the active ingredient that is within cannabis. Okay, this is the intermediate one, and this is the uh, most abbreviated down, the lowest one. Okay, right. So, what I now want to do is explain all the different parts of this name. So, I want to explain what is meant by the Delta 9, and then what is meant by the negative trans. Okay? So, the Delta 9 tells you where a double bond is in the structure of tetrahydrocannabinol. The negative trans Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol tells you the specific optical isomer of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol that is the active ingredient in cannabis. Okay, so let me now draw out the structure then of negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So, the structure has uh, three carbon rings, and I should just say that I'm going to draw this structure in skeletal form. Okay, so remember when we draw a skeletal structure, we don't show carbon atoms, they're implicitly shown uh, by corners, and we don't show hydrogen atoms coming off carbon atoms. Where you have missing bonds coming off carbon atoms, the implicit understanding is that those will be to hydrogen atoms. Okay, so we're going to have three carbon rings then. Okay, so I'll start by drawing the first one over here. So here is our first carbon ring, and they're all going to be six-membered rings. Okay, then we're going to have our second ring here, which isn't going to be a full carbon ring. It's actually going to contain one oxygen down here, like so. And then off the side of this, we're then going to have a third carbon ring, like so. Okay, now, let's put some double bonds on this structure firstly. So this ring here, the third one, is going to be a benzene ring. So I'll put alternating double and single bonds. Okay, uh, 
And then let's have some side groups coming off this. So down here, we're going to have a side chain of five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, like so. So here's a side chain that we'll have in this structure. We also have an alcohol group coming off up here. We have two methyl groups coming off here and here. And we'll have a methyl group coming off up here. Now, there's one final double bond to add onto this structure, and this double bond can move in position. So there are loads of different forms of tetrahydrocannabinol. This is the structure of tetrahydrocannabinol, or at least it almost is. What we need to do is add on another double bond, but there are loads of different places that you can put the double bond, and the molecule will still be considered tetrahydrocannabinol. In delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, you put the double bond here. Okay, so this double bond being here is the delta-9 form. Okay, so the instant I've put that double bond there, I am now talking about delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So this is the feature of, that is determined by this delta-9 here. Okay, so what I have now drawn you then is the picture of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. Okay, so to answer what the negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol is requires a, a more complicated concept in organic chemistry, namely the concept of optical isomers, okay? The problem you see is that this molecule, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, actually has four different optical isomers four different forms that are all different from one another and cannot be turned into one another without performing a chemical reaction. So why does it have four different optical isomers? Well, the answer it is that it has two chiral centers. This carbon here is a chiral center, and this carbon here is also a chiral center, and that pen is not particularly strong. It's running out of ink, so I'll go over it in a more vivid color. Okay, so in purple here, now circled, those two carbon atoms of the structure of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, those are chiral centers. They are chiral carbons, okay? And they're going to give rise to optical isomers of this molecule. So, why firstly are they chiral centers? Well, quite simply, they're chiral centers because they have four different groups coming off them. Okay, so it may not look as though they have four different groups coming off them, but you have to remember that each one of these carbons also has a hydrogen atom coming off it. Okay, and it's that final hydrogen that will be the fourth group that isn't shown on this picture because we don't show hydrogens coming off carbon atoms in skeletal structures. Okay, but having that final hydrogen means that these do indeed actually have four different groups coming off them. And whenever you have a carbon with four different groups coming off it, that gives rise to two different optical isomers of the structure. Okay, so let me explore this in a little bit more detail. So, if we firstly study this carbon here, let's imagine that this carbon was sat in the plane of the piece of paper. So let's imagine that I'm positioning this molecule and I'm going to put that carbon in the plane of the piece of paper. I'm also going to ensure that this carbon and this carbon here are also sat in the plane of the piece of paper so that this little sort of triangle of bonds here or arrow of bonds here, uh, these two bonds are both in the plane of the piece of paper. So these three atoms are all in the plane of the piece of paper. Now, what orientations are the two final groups that come off this carbon going to have to be in? Okay, well, we have two final groups. This carbon here is one final group, and then the other is the hydrogen. Well, one of them, uh, talking about their 3D structures now, one of them is going to have to be coming off out of the page at us at this sort of an angle that my pen is at here. Okay, whilst the other is going to have to be going into the page away from us at this sort of angle, imagine penetrating into the page uh, at the angle that my pen's making now, the other group will go in like that. Okay, so the question then becomes, is it this carbon here that comes out of the page towards us and then the hydrogen that goes into the page away from us, or is it the other way around? And those two ways of doing things give rise to two different structures that cannot be changed into one another without performing a chemical reaction. Okay, now, this negative here tells us 
which way round it is. The negative tells us that the hydrogen is going into the page away from us, so I'll denote that by a dashed line like so, with the hydrogen on the end. Okay, so this is showing the hydrogen going into the page away from us, and if you like, you could show this carbon coming out of the page towards us, and the way I'll show that is by having the bond getting thicker towards the end. So this carbon will come out of the page towards us. So that negative there, that tells us that the hydrogen is going into the page away from us and the carbon comes out of the page towards us. It tells us uh, the form uh, that that chiral centre is going to be in this optical isomer of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So I'll just stress it. Uh, this is a specific optical isomer of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. The active ingredient of cannabis is a specific optical isomer, namely this one, negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. And the negative bit tells us that the hydrogen goes into the page away from us off this carbon, and the carbon comes out of the page towards us. Okay, the trans portion then is going to tell us the optical uh, isomer form that this carbon is arranged in. So let's once again imagine that this carbon is in the plane of the piece of paper. Let's imagine that this carbon again is in the plane of the piece of paper. And let's imagine that this carbon down here is also in the plane of the piece of paper. Okay, so we've imagined that we can get all of these in the plane of the piece of paper here. Okay, now let's think about the orientation that the final two groups coming off this carbon are going to have to be in. Okay, well one again is going to come out of the page towards us like that. Okay, and the other is going to be going into the page away from us like this. So again we have the question, is it the carbon that comes out of the page towards us and the hydrogen that goes into the page away from us, or is it the other way round? Okay, and for each of the two arrangements that you have here, it can be in both of the possible arrangements here, hence giving rise to four total optical isomers. Now let's study our specific optical isomer here, negative trans delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. We said that the negative tells us that the hydrogen on this carbon goes into the page away from us. And indeed, if you wanted it the other way around, I didn't say this at the time, but if you wanted it the other way around, if you want the hydrogen to come out of the page towards us and the carbon to go into the page away from us, that would be the positive form. So you'd have a positive there rather than the negative. Okay. Now, what does the trans here tell us? Well, this tells us that the hydrogen of this carbon here is actually going to come out of the page towards us, and the carbon here is going to go into the page away from us. So this will be going into the page away from us. The hydrogen will be coming out of the page towards us. Now, why does trans denote that? Well, trans means on the opposite side to. So this is telling us that this hydrogen here will be on the opposite side of the molecule to this hydrogen here. Because we've chosen negative here, this hydrogen is going into the page away from us. So now, negative trans delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol means that the hydrogen of this other carbon will be going in the opposite direction to this one, so it will be coming out of the page towards us. So that's what the negative trans bit there means. It tells us the optical isomerism of these two chiral centers. So if we had negative cis, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. Cis is an old Latin word, I think. Maybe it's Greek, I don't know. Uh, I've never studied ancient languages. Um, but cis is an old word that means on the same side as. Okay, so cis, um, if, if we're talking about the negative cis delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, you'd have this hydrogen going into the page away from us, that's the negative, and then cis, the hydrogen here, would be on the same side as this hydrogen, so it would be going into the page away from us as well, and this carbon would be coming out of the page towards us. Okay, uh, and then you could also have the two different optical isomers of the positive form. So if this hydrogen was coming out of the page towards us, that would be the positive form, and then either the hydrogen would be going into the page away from us in this position here, of course that would be the trans form then, that would be positive trans because that the hydrogen would then be on the opposite side to this hydrogen, or this hydrogen would be coming out of the page towards us, then they'd both be on the same side, so that would be positive cis. Okay, so those are the four different optical isomers then of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. So as I say, the one that is actually in cannabis and is the main uh, psychoactive ingredient of cannabis is negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol.
And that's the one that I now have drawn here, where the hydrogen of this carbon goes into the page away from us and the carbon comes out of the page towards us, and the hydrogen of this page goes in, sorry, of this carbon uh, comes in the opposite orientation to this hydrogen, it comes out of the page towards us and this carbon goes into the page away from us. Okay, so there then is an explanation of this hideous name uh, for the active ingredient of cannabis. Okay, so the roots of administration then of cannabis. So cannabis, as I say, it's a plant. So what people usually do to get this active ingredient, negative trans delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, into their bloodstream is they smoke the plant. And bluntly, what happens here is that you set the portion of the plant that you have on fire, okay, so you set the leaf on fire, and then uh, one the leaf, once the leaf is on fire, the delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, specifically negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol that is in the leaf, then goes into a, a gaseous form, and the vapours, you then inhale the vapours, they go into the lungs, and then just like oxygen would, the negative trans delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol crosses uh, from the alveolar spaces into the bloodstream and then you've got the negative trans delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol in your blood. And I think we're going to have to agree to just call this delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol or tetrahydrocannabinol. Okay, so I'll continuously switch between the three names. People do use the three names. This is the absolutely rigorous one, but of course if you use these two, no one would ever think that you were talking about a different uh, form of the molecule. Everyone knows that you implicitly mean the one that is the active ingredient in cannabis, i.e. this one. Okay, it's just that we use these names because they're less hideous. Okay, right, uh, so that's the root of administration, that's the most normal root of administration uh, of cannabis. It can also be eaten, but this is a little bit more rare. Um, it's nowhere near as well absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract as it is uh, if you just inhale the vapours. And the vapours work very, very quickly because as soon as you breathe them in, they get up to the brain very quickly. So they work quicker than if you eat the cannabis. Okay. So that's the active ingredient of cannabis, and that's how you actually get it into your bloodstream. What we now want to discuss is once it's actually got to the brain, what does it actually do to you? What are the effects of cannabis? Okay, now, um, we are going to talk completely about the effects on the brain, so the effects on your mental function, rather than the effects on your other physiological systems. But uh, Cannabis, smoking cannabis does have effects on your other physiological symptoms, uh, sorry, systems, uh, but we're just going to focus on the effects of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol on the brain. How does it achieve its effects on the brain and now, what even are the effects that it has on the brain? Okay, so the effects then of uh, tetrahydrocannabinol on the brain. Okay, so the effects of cannabis can be divided into two main categories, okay? Uh, the first is we describe tetrahydrocannabinol as a depressant, okay? Now this does not mean that it makes you depressed. Instead it means that it does the exact opposite of what a stimulant would do. Whereas a stimulant makes you very, very alert, very, very awake, very, very excited, very, very energetic. So stimulants examples are things like cocaine, amphetamine, methamphetamine, things like that. A depressant makes you more relaxed. It makes you less uh, alert, okay, and more relaxed. So the major effects then of a depressant are that it makes you very relaxed, okay? It also makes you very happy, okay? So the fancy word for feeling very happy and at ease with the world is euphoria, so it makes you relaxed and very happy. It also increases your confidence, decreases your anxiety, and also makes you less alert, okay? So your alertness goes down. Okay, now, its effects are very, very similar to the effects of alcohol. However, there's one key thing that alcohol does which cannabis or tetrahydrocannabinol doesn't do. Okay, and that's that alcohol makes you extremely reckless. So alcohol has an ability to make someone 
quite reckless. Now, what do I mean by reckless? Reckless means that you do not evaluate how dangerous something is correctly. You do not uh, evaluate the risk of something correctly. You're too unafraid, basically. You lose your fear, okay? Uh, and this is why uh, alcohol usage is associated with so many traffic accidents, because when people are intoxicated and drive, they do not analyze risk correctly at all. Again, they feel very, very reckless. Cannabis does not cause this, so in fact I shouldn't be putting this in my list of the effects of cannabis. This is one of the key things that alcohol does that cannabis does not do. Okay, other than that, the effects of cannabis as a depressant are very, very similar to the effects of alcohol. Okay, right. Now that's one category of the effects of cannabis. The other major category of the effects of cannabis are that it is a psychotomimetic or a psychotomimetic. Okay, and I'll just write this out here. So a psychotomimetic. Now, what is meant by a psychotomimetic? A psychotomimetic means that it has the ability to cause psychosis. Okay, now psychosis... Oh, and I've used that silly pen again. Never mind. Um, so psychotomimetic means that it has the ability to cause psychosis. Now, psychosis is the major symptom of schizophrenia. It's the you know, it's the main symptom, it's the sort of uh, prototype symptom of schizophrenia. Okay, now what does psychosis actually mean? Psychosis means uh, three different things. Okay, it means illusions, hallucinations, and delusions. And I'll just describe what the difference between uh, these are. So, psychosis is characterized by illusions, hallucinations, and delusions. Okay, so these go up in order of severity. Illusions are the least severe, hallucinations are the intermediately severe, and then delusions are the most severe. Okay, so illusions then. Illusions are where um, you perceive things wrongly. Okay, so you perceive things in a way other than the way that people would normally perceive things, and I'll give you examples of the illusions that are caused by cannabis in a moment. So you you perceive things in ways that you shouldn't, basically. Okay, you perceive sensory stimuli in ways that you shouldn't. Okay, so misperceiving sensory stimuli is what illusions is all about. Hallucinations is then when you perceive sensory stimuli that are not actually present. So illusions, you perceive sensory stimuli that are there in a way that you shouldn't perceive them, you misperceive them. In hallucinations, you perceive sensory stimuli that aren't actually there. So the sort of characteristic ones are auditory hallucinations, where you hear voices that aren't there, okay? Uh, and then delusions. If you're having delusions, you believe things that are evidently not true. Okay, so people that are just having hallucinations and are not having delusions will generally accept that the voices that they're hearing aren't actually there. They will accept that when other people say they're not there, that they are not there. Whereas people who are delusional, uh, they will actually believe that everyone else is wrong and they really will believe that everyone else is wrong and that they are right. Okay, so they will hold beliefs uh, that are absolutely obviously not true. Okay, that's what is meant by having delusions. Okay, uh, so in schizophrenia, uh, people generally have hallucinations and delusions. Now, cannabis then has the ability to cause symptoms similar to schizophrenia. Now, it doesn't generally cause delusions, and it's pretty rare for it to actually cause hallucinations, but it does cause a lot of illusions. It can cause hallucinations, but usually you have to have a very strong dose to actually get it to cause hallucinations. Okay, so, uh, what, then is, what then are the illusions that cannabis causes? Well, generally what it does is it makes sights and sounds far more intense and far more vivid than they would usually be. Okay, so you'll see lights as far more bright and exciting and incredible than they would ever be normally. So you'll see the same thing as everyone else, but you'll see it far more vividly and intently uh, than uh, everyone else will see it, okay? In addition, you generally hear things as far more intense and far more vivid than uh, normal, okay? So whilst you actually 
are, are high on cannabis. Um, you will be perceiving the world in a very strange way. Your sights will appear far more intense and far more vivid than normal, and sounds will appear far more intense and far more vivid than normal. Okay, so vivid perceptions of reality. Okay, the other big thing that uh, changes, the other big illusion that occurs, is you have the illusion that time is slowing down. Okay, so the way in which you perceive time seems to change when you take cannabis, and you seem to perceive time as going uh, slower. Okay, so time seems to slow down when you're high on cannabis. Okay, so those are the two big illusions that it can cause. As I say, hallucinations are less common than the illusions. The illusions are very common. Uh, hallucinations, some people do have hallucinations, and usually it's when you take a very uh, strong dose of cannabis. Usually they are auditory or visual, so you'll hear voices or see things that aren't there. Okay, but as I say, some people use cannabis regularly and have never ever had a hallucination when using it. Okay, it's nowhere near as good at causing hallucinations as, for instance, something like LSD. Okay, but it can cause hallucinations. So that's another big word that we would use to describe the effects then of cannabis. We describe it as a psychotomimetic, uh, the ability to cause psychosis symptoms. Okay, and the final effect that cannabis has is it increases your appetite, it makes you hungrier. Okay, so you feel hungry, and the word that used to be used to describe this is it gives you the munchies. Okay, so when people say that they have the munchies, it's in reference to uh, people who take cannabis and get a rise in, the appetite, in their appetite after having taken it. Okay, so it also raises your appetite. Okay, so those are the effects then of taking cannabis, and I should say that when you do smoke cannabis, these effects will come on very, very quickly, because in very, very quickly after inhaling the uh, vapours of the Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, it will get into the bloodstream, and then it's very quickly up to the brain and affecting the brain. So the onset of these uh, symptoms, the cannabis high as it's called, is very, very quick. Okay, so we'll have a break here, and in the next video what we'll do is start by discussing how uh, cannabis is removed from the body, so a little bit on the pharmacokinetics of cannabis, uh, and uh, then what we'll move on to is the come down addiction, uh, and then looking at the mechanisms uh, that can explain cannabis' effects.